Hello! So in this video I want to show you how to play with Caret and with Neural Networks and I'm, go I'm also going to use this library Neural Sense created by my colleagues at my university in order to discuss how overfitting can be also dangerous in order to give some interpretability to the data. So let's get started. I'm going to load these libraries and I will explain later how to use the sensitivity analysis for in this case and I'm going to use once more this data set that we created for KNN. So let's import this. Interestingly, I'm going to create a new dummy variable. This is going to be called x3. And as you can see here, it's pure random noise. And I'm going to choose a random number distributed Gaussianly with the same number of rows as the data. Okay, so if you take a look at the data, then we have three numerical variables, x1, x2, and x3, that are going to be our features. And then the variable that we want to predict, that is this factor that has two levels, no and yes, okay? Uh, so let's take a look at the data and as you can see here the data is, is well balanced so we have 500 observations each and the numbers as you can see here are more or less symmetric because the median and the mean are almost equal in all of the cases okay let's plot the data probably you're familiar with this plot i've used it in a lot of videos and you can use base r in order you want to plot this data it's, it's not going to be that fancy but it's probably use, it's simpler to use Okay, let's get started. I'm going to use all the time this seed uh, for one reason, because you can plug and play with uh, specific parts of the code, so you don't have to run the code if you want to replicate my results. And again, I'm going to split my data set. I'm going to use 80% for training, 20% for testing. Okay, and then I'm going to use uh, some control on on the theory. I'm going to use cross-validation and tenfold cross-validation. I'm going to compute different metrics like accuracy, sensitivity, but also kappa and the rock curve, I never ended the curve. I'm going to ask uh, the carrot to provide some probabilities, if, just in case I want to do some calculations with that, and save predictions in order to compare different models. So let's run this. Okay, so let's start with the first model. Our first model is going to be uh, a neural network with just one hidden, one neural in the hidden layer. This is not exactly uh, logistic regression. In the video I use logistic regression, but to do that you, you have to say that you have zero neurons in the hidden layer and also skip the hidden layer in order to connect the input with the output. But the results are going to be more or less the same. I'm going to use uh, 250 iterations in, in the training process and I'm going to pre-process the data on, in order to uh, uh, subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation. Okay, let's run this. This is pretty fast. And I'm going to use some fancy tricks in ggplot. You don't need to understand this, but I, I'm going to leave this in order to visualize the, the results. I'm going to create a grid, which is uh, evenly is, is spaced for all the variables with 150 points. So basically what I'm, I'm going to do is create a, a lattice here. So I'm going to predict according to that lattice. So let me run this thing. Okay, and then as I'm showing here, I'm going to use this grid in order to produce uh, classes, new classes. Row means that I'm going to predict yes or no using the training multilayer perceptron. And I'm going to store that in this variable. So let's do this and some ggplotting. And here we go. And you can see the data. Uh, now, instead of plotting in blues and reds, I'm, I'm using this just to show that we have this line here. You can see some noise here, but this is related to this number 150. If I increase this, this is going, going to take longer, but the plot is going to be more, I don't know, smooth. And again, if I use just one neuron, the only thing that I can do is a linear combination of the inputs. This is like logistic regression. So basically what I'm doing is splitting the world in above the line or below the line. Okay, let me plug this one here again. Okay, I'll explain later this part, but now we can check using carrots function var imp, the, uh, the mo most important variables here. And here, as you can see, this is it's pretty smart. It, it knows that X3 is random noise and it works pretty nicely. And also we can plot this and you can see this visually. Okay, let's let's move on. What if now instead of having one neuron in the hidden layer, we have two of them. Now we can do more fancy stuff as I show in the theory. Okay, let's train this. And again, let's create a grid and ggplot that. And here we go. And as I explained, in principle, the last neuron is the one responsible of this smoothing here. Otherwise, we would have a kind of linear combination of uh, straight lines. 
but I'm pretty happy with this. With just two neurons, we are capturing uh, pretty nicely what, what is happening there. And, and still, we still have this ability of explaining stuff. And the explanation would be something like the first neuron is specialized in this part of the graph, the second neuron in this part, and overall we have this splitting in, in blacks and whites. Okay? So let's do some predictions. Remember, you can use the function predict of caret in order to use the training model and the training data. And, and these predictions, uh, by default, if I run just this part, are going to be the classes, the yes and no. So I'm going to plug this into this variable. And I'm going to compute the confusion matrix using this prediction and the, the variable y in the training data set. So let's run this. OK, and then accuracy is it's not bad, uh, almost 89%. Okay, you can, there is this trick, if you add this to this call to the function, the function confusion matrix, you just print uh, the accuracy. So if you would just want to compute the accuracy, just run this, and it's again, 80, almost 89%. Okay, let's do this with the testing data set. So let's do some predictions. And now, uh, this is pretty nice, because not only the plot seems really good, but also accuracy is high, even higher in the testing data set. So the ability of this very simple model to, to do some extrapolations to future data is pretty good. Okay, We can use the, the library uh, neural net tools to plot this function. Uh, where is it? Here. OK, sorry. Uh, OK, here I am. So you can plot the network. And, and you can see here two neurons in the hidden layer. I'm, I'm plugging three variables here and then uh, uh, adding all the information in the output layer. Again, the most important variable is x1 according to this model, x2 is also important, and x3 is random noise, so, so far so good. Let me call you this function, sensi sensitivity analysis for MLP. And again, as you can see here, I, I'm going to explain this in another video, but now the most important part is that this con the analysis of importance performed by caret is consistent with sensitivity analysis. And variable x3 is garbage, so this is captured pretty nicely in this plot. Okay, let's move on. What if now, instead of using two, we, we use ten uh, neurons in the hidden layer? So let's run this. Again, the sensitivity analysis is uh, nice, but as you can see here, we have some of some level of overfitting. Why I'm saying that? Because now, because of this huge number of neurons in the intermediate in the intermediate layer, then X3 seems to be relevant. When actually we don't know that it isn't. And why is that? Because we have some overfitting, so maybe we're trying to overfit that noise. So let's plot this, and here we go. And you see that we have these regions with things are not working very well. So let's do some predictions. Accuracy is high because this means that we have overfitting. Actually, in a super overfitting model, we would have 100% accuracy in the training part. But then testing drops a little bit, and this means that the ability of this neuron to produce uh, new, new to predict new observations is not that good. OK, let's jump a little bit. I'm going to explain uh, how to how to constrained a little bit overfitting using this DK parameter in another video, but so far you can see here that if I'm, I'm, I'm introducing a penalty in the training, then things are going to be smoother again. As you can see now, this boundary is smooth again, and again, accuracy is not that good, but at least, well, not even at least, so maybe it's that too much. So let's, let's try again, but instead of using 3, let's use, let's say, 0.1 which is a, sl a slight penalty. And let's see what happens. OK, nice. So now accuracy is high. The ability to generalize to new data is high. So this feeding with 10 neurons is better than the other. So again, we, all, we have to play not only with the number of neurons, but also with uh, the ability of uh, stop overfeeding. Okay. OK, let's move on a little bit. Now I'm going to increase the number of iterations, the epochs in the training phase. Uh, uh, again, I'm going to explain that in another video, but basically the, more, the larger this uh, number, the more probability that you are overfitting your data because you are allowing for a small, I don't know, random islands in the data to be, uh, to be fitted. So let's run this. It's going to be longer because uh, we are using more iterations. And here we go. Again, a lot of noise. And accuracy probably is going to be a yes. As you can see here, accuracy is high for the training, but it's pretty low for testing. Okay. 
if we plot sensitivity analysis again x3 is almost at the same level of x2 which is ridiculous because we know that x3 is pure noise okay and and uh, i'll let you the code to, to play with that so let's move on a little bit and let's jump to this part i'm going to show you that if you have a large number of neurons and uh, then the only way to avoid overfitting is uh, reduce the number of iterations so training is, is going to be shorter and, uh, and the additional benefit is that we are avoiding overfitting so here we go it goes fast and like, not bad the boundary seems pretty nice and again we are reducing overfitting because we are not allowing to overfit by repetition in the training phase okay enough trial and error and so far we have been playing with a number of neurons in the hidden layer and the decay rate and now we're going to use cross-validation to kind of optimize this. So I'm going to use hateful cross-validation just for fun. And here we go. So I'm, I'm going to try four different values. So four different numbers of neurons and four different values of the decay rate. So sorry, let's run this just in case. And here we go. Well, as you can see here, with one neuron we cannot do anything, so logistic regression is not good enough. But then after that, okay, they are almost doing a pretty, much a pretty good job. Actually, the best job is probably with three neurons, which is a compromise between complexity and overfitting. And here you can see that with an intermediate penalty, not too small, not too large, we have good accuracy. Okay, so let's do this again, and now we are going to use different values ranging from 2 to 25 so there are a lot of values that we want to explore and the decays we're going to use uh, 10 to the minus 9 10 to the minus 8 and so on and so forth until 10 to the 0 which is uh, 1 okay in order to to do a kind of matrix of values we're going to use this function expand grid you can copy and paste this result and then this is going to take a little bit so i'm going to stop the video and grab a coffee and show you the results in a while so let's run this. Mmm, delicious. Well, it was more or less a minute. It wasn't that long. So let me show you the results. I'm going to use ggplot again. And I'm going to say, because I was using 10 to the minus something, uh, I'm going to use a logarithmic scale in the x-axis. Yeah, this is not so relevant. And this is nice. Okay, as you can see here, playing with a number of hidden units. And this is a way to normalize that. I have good results in all cases, accuracy is pretty high in all cases, and it's a matter of uh, going to the third point in, in, in accuracy, so the results are more or less consistent in all the cases. So again, probably the winner is this one, but it's using 25 in, uh, hidden units. I, I don't like that, actually. So I would prefer to use something like 2, and then or 3, maybe 3, uh, two, maybe it's too low, but maybe 3 is something in the middle. So sometimes uh, more accuracy is not better because again, when 25 hidden layers, the interpretability is going to be really low. Okay, so let's plot this network, and as you can see here, this is too complex. So I, as I was saying, I would prefer something simpler than something more sophisticated. So accuracy is not all on in life, and and let's see what's happening here. Okay, you can see that this is pretty nice, but and the reason there is a reason why. And it's because if for 25 neurons, we're using a high penalty. So low penalties in this side, high penalties in this side. And penalty somehow is allowing for this larger uh, neural network to perform well. So again, going back to my main motto in this, in this course, more accuracy is not always the, the, the preferred choice. I would prefer interpretability. And, and sometimes you need to be, I know, more relaxed with this kind of automatic metrics. 